A long time ago, in a land not too far away, the city of angels, otherwise known as Los Angeles, California, a young girl named Jessica dreamed of becoming a singer. <laughs> Fast forward about 25 years later or so, and she now works for the Australian government, helping American businesses better understand Australia's quantum capabilities and how to access them. Life works in very funny ways. Before I go further into this story, I would like to thank Denise, Andre, and Farai for having me speak at this awesome and inspirational event. Back to how I got here. So after a long stint at Walmart's e-commerce division, some time working in startups, about a year of world travel, and a brief career in jewelry, I landed at the Australian Trade and Investment Commission, the Australian government's commercial arm. Uh, my focus is on working with companies to leverage Australian capabilities, either by opening an office in Australia or by partnering with Australian organizations, uh, whether commercial or R&D. As many of you know, Australia has world-class talent. And frankly, tell me who doesn't want to spend a day in the lab and then go to the beach for a swim and some relaxation afterwards. This is the reality of working in quantum in Australia. And kangaroos. Don't forget the kangaroos. <laughs> Why is Australia so good at quantum technology? For a brief history, I'm going to refer to an article entitled Charting the Australian Landscape by T.M. Robertson and A.G. White. Quantum science in Australia was shaped primarily by two fields of research in the 1980s and 1990s. One was quantum optics, led by Professor Bachor, Hans Bachor at the ANU, and by Professor Gerard Milburn, also at the ANU, but now at the University of Queensland. And uh, they went on to have an amazing legacy student-wise. One of their students was Mike Nielsen, who wrote one of the key textbooks in quantum, Mike and Ike's. The second field was condensed matter physics, led by Professor Robert Clark from the University of New South Wales. Clark was a former Royal Australian Navy lieutenant who was at Oxford, and after his time at Oxford, happened to bring back an immense amount of quantum-related equipment to Australia. Now... After he brought back the equipment from Oxford to Australia, he and a variety of other researchers began to create the necessary infrastructure, notably the National Pulsed Magnetic Laboratory in Australia. So you may be thinking, okay, so those are they're two separate fields right now. So what does that mean? Uh, so, you know, what happened is a couple of key events. In 1998, a postdoc at the University of New South Wales, Dr. Bruce Kane, published a theoretical proposal to realize quantum computing with silicon technology. At the same time, Professor Milburn and colleagues in the United States were working on a theoretical proposal to achieve photonic quantum computing using linear optics. This work laid the foundations for what would then become the Special Research Center for Quantum Computer Technology, led by both Clark and Milburn as director and deputy director. The 1990s also saw groups at the ANU and University of Queensland, respectively led by Bachor and Helena Rubinstein Dunlop, establish cold atom systems, which led to major quantum initiatives. Further on in 2003, Professor Vicky Serra, who was then the Chief Executive Officer of the Australian Research Council, established the Centers of Excellence program with the aim of undertaking cutting edge research. So the Centers of Excellence program is a program each center typically contains around 100 to 150 science scientists all working on ambitious scientific projects. Okay, so now you have a bit of history. Where are we now? So one of my favorite statistics is Australia has about 25 million people, but it has 22 quantum related research institutions. That is almost one related quantum related research institution Per, per million people in Australia. It's incredible. Two of these quant are quantum focused set two of these are quantum focused centers of excellence and four are quantum related centers of excellence. These institutions have a 60% higher normalized citation impact compared to the global average. And we have eight universities that are performing well above standard world standard quantum physics research. There are also at least 16 quantum private related private organizations in Australia, including Silicon Quantum Computing, Quintessence Labs, Q Control, Rigetti, who also bought Australian company QX branch last year and has since been expanding its R&D efforts in South Australia, IBM, Lockheed, 
and Microsoft. Microsoft has a very, very large R&D operation in Sydney run by Professor David Riley. Additionally, two of the leading women in quantum worldwide, Michelle Simmons and Helena Rubenstein Dunlop, live in Australia. So how can you participate? Uh, I know that there are a variety of different people with different backgrounds in this group. So getting a little bit deeper into how you can participate. So one of the, one of the options is collaboration and co-creation. There, uh, as I said, is an immense amount of research being done in Australia, and there are quite a few uh, various research institutions that have prototypes that are really ready for testing and commercialization. So if you are a corporation and you have a particular vertical expertise, uh, many Australian research organizations are looking for strategic collaborations and partnerships in order to improve the use cases for their R&D. For instance, the Equa Center of Excellence has something called the Translation Research Laboratory, in which they have a variety of prototypes, but are simply looking for the partners right now, whether from defense, healthcare, mining and resources, financial services to be able to partner with. Additionally, just to give a domestic example, quantum computing company Quantum Brilliance in Australia is now partnering with the Pauzy Supercomputing Center to, on a roadmap that begins with quantum computing, emulators, and grows into quantum processing infrastructure. Uh, and that quantum processing infrastructure is focused on crunching the data from the square kilometer array. And if you haven't heard of the square kilometer array, it is a pretty massive project. It's an international project to build the world's largest radio telescope with eventually over a square kilometer, 1 million square meters of collecting area. Okay, next way you can get involved, clients. Uh, there are already quite a few commercialized com um, companies operating in Australia. As I mentioned, one before, Q Control and Quintessence Labs are two of the most well-known ones. Uh, Q Control is already commercialized and selling product and growing the quantum hardware industry with technology that minimizes errors and extends the time that a quantum computer can run. Their mission is to make all quantum computers commercially useful sooner. And that's run by Michael Birchuk. The other one is called... Quintessence Labs, and that is a quantum cybersecurity company. So funding, uh, because who doesn't love money? Every ecosystem needs money. So a couple of different opportunities funding-wise. Uh, one of the opportunities is actually specifically funding companies. So we do have a variety of funds already in Australia that are funding companies. Um, two to focus on right now would be Main Sequence Ventures, which is our national science organization, the CSIRO's fund. And the other one is Incutel, which originally is from the United States, focused on defense and dual-use technologies. And they actually, one of the key reasons that they moved to Australia was primarily because of some of the incredible quantum technology we had. And they've begun to make some large investments in Australia. But it's not just about the VC investing. It's also about longer term investing to build ecosystems. And so if you're interested in kind of what it takes and building not only, you know, it's expensive to not only build a company in quantum, it's really expensive to build an ecosystem in a country. So we are definitely looking for strategic partners to help work on that funding. Education. So a couple of key things just happened this year in Australia within the education quantum space. One is the development of the Silicon, Silicon Quantum Academy in Sydney. And that is comprised of four different universities in Sydney, plus some government funding from the New South Wales government and the Office of the Chief Scientist. And the opportunity right now is to apply for postdoctoral fellowships. And that opportunity is actually open until August 11th right now for the next round of fellowships. And I can share information if you connect with me on, on LinkedIn. The other opportunity uh, is that the University of New South Wales last week, and I saw Rishi posted about that, um, is now offering a, a bachelor's degree in quantum engineering. So that's a super exciting uh, opportunity right now. And, and going back to the Silicon Quantum Academy, they are also looking for corporate partners who are really, really interested in developing content that can help upskill students and prepare them for the workforce, but also that can upskill people in the corporate environment. Because as we all know, uh, we need to be able to sell products to, to people. So uh, making sure that corporations are upskilled is really important. And last but not least, probably first, frankly, is talent. 
Um, if anyone tells you that there's one place in the world that has all the quantum talent right now, they are not telling the truth. Even though I realize I'm sitting here selling you on Australia, we don't have all the quantum talent. No one has all the quantum talent. We are in a land grab for quantum talent. And so I saw a mention earlier about our visa processes. Uh, we've been working a lot on our visa processes. And in fact, we have something called the Global Talent Independent Visa. And the Global Talent Independent Visa will has a one of the focuses of this visa is particularly on quantum. And so we will actually you can apply if you have a background specifically in quantum and experience to get within a month, it's a concierge service working with the Department of Home Affairs, a visa that leads to permanent residency in Australia. So we are really, really keen to have people come, to have people study, to have people launch companies, to have people join companies. We are trying to make it as easy as possible. So once again, a visa in one month, which leads immediately to permanent residency. So we've made a lot of changes there and we're continuing to make a lot of changes, understanding that talent is the most important thing that can help change uh, a country's economy. So in conclusion, what have we learned today? Australia already has a rich quantum legacy and is a great place to live and work in one of the most exciting regions in the world, the Asia Pacific region. So whether you are a corporate looking for innovation or a student looking to grow your career, or an entrepreneur looking to start a business, come join us in Australia, come for the career opportunities, stay for the lifestyle. In conclusion, this is so, this is a, don't laugh at me. In conclusion, in the end, that little girl from Los Angeles did actually become a singer. Instead of songs, she just sings the praises of the quantum community in Australia and feels very lucky to be able to do so. Thanks again for your time and thanks Denise, Andre, and Farai for having me. <laughs> I had to put that in there. Um, so, uh, I'm open to uh, questions now, I guess. There's two minutes and seven seconds, six seconds. So if, uh, if anyone has any questions, I think you can kind of take the mic. Thanks, everyone, for your time. And do feel free to connect with me on, um, on LinkedIn because we are just very, very excited uh, to, to connect with you and, and share more information with you. And I'm happy to also share um, the link about the visa and the link about the history of Australian quantum and all sorts of things. So if no one has any questions, uh, I'm going to sign off and wish everyone a beautiful day or night or afternoon, wherever in the world you are. Thanks so much. Bye.